really your fault. Dario, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. You're Thank a you. great historian of the sport. And I think you mentioned this. Two races came to mind for me right away. The tremendous battle between Al Lemster Jr. and Emerson Fittipaldi was certainly one to contact. The other, the 1960 battle between Roger Ward and Jim Rathbun that had so many passes. This was up right now. His instructions. 96 win for the Indy Car team. Holy smokes. 96 wow. win at the 96. Oh, that's Indy cool. 500. Yeah. Wow. And Chip's fifth. That's pretty good. I just mentioned the 60 race, uh -huh. which had so many passes in it. And then, of course, I think I heard you mention over the VA the Emerson Fitter Paul the Allen's or Junior situation. <laughs> 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 Nikki, move the bottle from away from her. She's been in the truck all day in the air. <laughs> <laughs> My dog sees these pictures. She's going to get away with this. Side, so he, I moved over a bit and I saw coming and I said, No, nah, I'm, I'm not too late on that. So I moved. But this was well before the corner. I moved back up. We turned into the corner. I gave him a load of room and I think just to that tight line, he, he just lost it. Turn one was the trickiest corner all day. And uh, if you did go in there with a tight line, it tended to get a bit loose. And he he lost the rear, I guess, and then came around and, uh, and, and hit us. And I just I kept the foot and I managed to catch it. And uh, that was it. But it's a hell of a, hell of a finish. Hi, Dario. This race had a record for most lead changes. Of course, it's the first time here at Indy since Stan Weldon. Where does this rank for you among your races here and your victories here? Well, it's very, very difficult to choose one. They're all special to me. Um, today, I think, obviously coming from the back and the, the crazy last lap, that's, that was the, the highlight. But the, the thing that really got me was the... The, the kind of the, 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 the love that the fans showed for, for Dan and, and, the, and the, the tribute that we were all able to pay him by, you know, the, the lap 26, lap 98, doing that. And just Susie came around in the car with us afterwards and just see the reaction and how much he was loved. And, and uh, that was, to me, that was, it was, it was a great thing to see and um, made me happy. And um, I think him and, and uh, I, I said on TV, I dedicated it to, to, to Dan and, and Michael Wanzer, who we both lost within days of each other at the end of, uh, of last season. We try to work back and forth in the rooms, way we try to do it here. So Ed, you're next, and then I'm going to follow. Uh, 
uh, Dario, two part question. One, from the time you got hit on the pit road and spun out and came back, to Sato going inside you there, it seems that you have become just about unperturbable on this racetrack. Is there a certain confidence in having done so well here in so many laps on the track? And second part, your wife, right after the race was over, mentioned the two greatest Scottish drivers ever. She said Jackie Stewart brought him up right, and Jim Clark is looking down on him. The second part, could you talk about sort of your place among the Scottish drivers and, and, and the those two that you're sort of headed for that level? Yeah, I'll, I'll start with, with, with Jackie and, and Jimmy. I think my mom, I don't know if she brought me out right, she, she definitely, you know, when I misbehaved, she... <laughs> I don't think you've met my mom, will know what I'm talking about. Um, but Jackie was, was a great person for me to, to meet at that stage in my life and the education he gave me and um, continues to do so. I mean, still now I phone him up to Jackie, what do I do here? And he'll, he'll give me a, uh, some advice and, you know, he has such an unusual way of thinking about things sometimes. He's got such a great brain and... Um, so I'm always I'm always grateful to Jackie, um, and Jimmy Clark. I mean, he's, he's the guy, you know. Between him and Jackie, they're the guys I wanted to emulate and to, you know, to, to to drive like. I guess I don't have their, you know, I don't have their talent. So I just I try and work hard, and uh, I'm lucky I'm with a great team. And also about the, the oh. sorry. Well. I don't come in here with any expectations for the race. I work on my car during practice. You know, Scott and I work together very tightly with, with the target team, and we try and get the fastest, best car we can to go racing. And then we don't. I don't have any expectations. I just go out and and and, and do the best job I can, and I'm not really think go into it thinking, oh, I'm going to win this one or anything. So it, you've got to let the race come to you in some ways, and that's what I do. Whether I was getting spun in the pits and we didn't get back up, that's what it was going to give me today, but luckily we had the car and I was able to, to time those passes. That was the key, I think, was timing my passes. A, a good car, but I was able to, to get to time the passes coming up. And um, one of the reasons I love driving for the target team, they just, it's the same thing that the, the, the Andretti guys have. Don't give up. There's no, oh, damn. Is that right? Okay, here we go. This is the situation we find ourselves in. How are we going to get out of it? And... Uh, we did today, and you know, to finish one two with, with, with Scott and have TK third. Um, that's that was a, uh, was a was a cool result. Dario, is, is can you take us through that moment once again when Takuma came up inside you? What were you thinking? What were you hearing on the radio? Well, I heard my sponsor say he's got a run on you, he's coming up. Okay, start to look inside, and I was moving over, and then I, I look in the mirror and I see what, exactly where he was, and I started moving back. Um, you know, we're allowed to, we're allowed to, uh, what did they say? You're allowed to move over to the wall and leave the car behind an inch, a car width and an inch. And I wanted to make sure I left more than that. Um, and then my plan from that point was to, look, I think, I was kind of letting the car go, okay, that deep gulp, because I had to go, I knew I'd have to go around the outside of one wide open, up towards the grey, to stand a chance of winning. And... Takuma, I guess, he, he lost the rear. I watched the replay on the, on, the, on the TV there, and he lost the rear on the way in. And I felt the, the hit, and the car got sideways, but I, I kept my foot in, and, uh, and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, about that move, Dario, were you surprised to see Takuma come there based on, like Scott was saying, he thought he should have waited uh, until the <clears throat> Well, Taku's very aggressive. <coughs> and uh, he thought, I think he thought that was his chance. <coughs> I mean, what, you know, why not? He, uh, he, I think he did, he did uh, everything right up until he lost the rear end of the car. You know what I mean? That was that was the problem. He, had, I guess, the car was too too oversteering, and he lost the rear. And up until that point, I thought he'd, he'd made a good move. I wasn't very happy about it. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. I, I didn't, I didn't touch him. I didn't squeeze him down. Um, he just lost the rear of the car. Dario, I know you don't like to kind of talk about yourself a little bit, but really you've become a master of the moment, especially since 
returning here in 09, I mean, how can you even begin to put in the words that, you know, when there's a big moment that can happen, you seem to be the guy that delivers. It's a team sport, isn't it, Bruce? It's, yeah. it's such a team sport, and I'm very aware of the fact that the team wins it, myself and all the other members of the team. You know, that includes Honda. We all win it together, and I couldn't just jump in any car here. But this group of people that I get to work with, I know how lucky I am, and I don't take it for granted. Back back here. Hi, Hi, Jenna. Two questions for you. One, piggybacks off of this, and I, I asked you this. Oh, no, it's, I'm out of order. Piggybacking off of Bruce, it is a team sport. What do you say to Dick? You, you know, obviously wanted it also, and then you end up with the victory. You want to ask the second one, you want to wait for the answer. Yeah, that's, that's tough because when it's going on, yeah, I want to beat Scott, and I kind of know he wants to beat me. I don't think I've met a more competitive individual. With maybe the exception of Dan in the early years, who just was like, and Scott is, continues to be like that. And so we're out there and we're racing as hard as we can. And Chip and Mike are kind of, they're on their timing stands looking at each other, going, I'm going to win this one. You know, so they're, they, we were out there racing each other hard, and then it's all over. And I, I, he comes up in, in victory lane, and I, you know, he's my buddy. Out in the track, he's the competition, but a teammate. And then afterwards, he's my friend, and I see the disappointment in his face, and I see the disappointment in TK's face, and I went, and uh, you know, I think I think both those guys will get more championships, and then you went, they're just too good, not to, um, and when you beat guys like that, I, I take that as a big accomplishment because they're God, they're not easy to beat. My second question is one I ask you all the time and you refuse to ever answer it. <laughs> you, um, for the championships. You have four championships. You have three no. over 500 now and you've got 31 victories. There's you know, one more spot and it's just Andretti's and Unser's and AJ in front of you. I mean, when do you start looking at, at where you stack up in the world of open wheel racing? Maybe when I retire. I think then. Um, I don't know. I, uh, I'm very proud of, and I've said this before, I'm very proud of the achievements that, you know, whether there's the Indy wins, the championships, every one of the race wins. Um, you know, and I, sometimes I look back, but generally I'm trying looking forward. And when I retire, that will be the time to kind of look back and you know, and hang out with uh, with my friends here, and hang over the fence and shout abuse at Dixie and, and Will and Tony and all the guys that are still racing. Um, today, I was lucky enough to to be in the, in the green room, and, and TK and I were sitting together, finding a quiet corner, and then Pernelli came up, Bobby Unser came up, Johnny Rutherford came up, and I'm like, you yeah, know, this is cool. This is, this is, and we, TK and I were getting our pictures taken, we're like a couple of kids, you know, like, hey, we're these legends of the sport, and, uh, um, yeah, the time to, I guess the time to look back is when I'm retired. Congratulations, first of Thank all, you. on this. A uh, couple questions. One, <coughs> when you had Susie get in the car and ride with you, was that just a completely spontaneous situation that she was there and you said, come on and be a part of this? And I'll ask you the second question. Okay, well, Suze came over. Um, to, to, to say well done and uh, got to have a wee chat and uh, I tell you what, she's a stronger person than I am to come here, you know, I know I, she knows better than anybody how much Dan loved Indy and how much Indy loved Dan but to be here, to go through all those emotions and, and so when we saw her Ashley and I were saying it would be cool to, to for Suze to come because last year, my favourite memory of, of of the race last year was Dan was going out in his parade lap afterwards and I had this crazy notion in my head that I was going to carjack him. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm standing in pit lane and I'm disappointed but at the same time I'm happy for my, my, my friend. And I see him coming towards me and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is going to be good. And I see his face 
and he is just sobbing. It meant so much to him. Everything that had happened to him, you know, with not having a regular drive, all the stuff with his mum, with, with, with Alzheimer's, and I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. And I just gave him a big hug and told him how proud I was of him. And so it meant a lot that Suze was able to come around with us. Uh, and the second part of it is, if you could just speak about um, allowing yourself perhaps to feel really happy and really pleased. You know, some people would say after Las Vegas, you know, you, you would accomplish so much in the sport and, you know, just if you could talk about the range of emotion from from that to kind of a rough start to the season, you might say, and, and to getting where you are today and how you're doing. Oh, I think bracing is emotion. Life is, is as well, but you know, racing I think really exemplifies that. And uh, if that's the right word, um, and Vegas was the lowest of the low. You know, up there, Fontana <coughs> in Vegas last year was the lowest of the low, and uh, and I think the reason we all got back in the cars and the reason all the mechanics got back in pit lane and the fans continued to come to the races is days like today we await the motion of, 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 of something like today. That's certainly why I, I got back in the car. Um, there's not a feeling like standing in victory lane, there, there, there isn't. Hey Jerry, how do you describe Sato's mood? Brave, rash, or just plain foolish? None of those. I thought, as I said, I thought it was a good move until you know, the mistake. I guess the mistake he made. I don't know if he didn't make it. He just got loose, and that, that you know he's relying on the balance of the car as he turns in the corner, and the car was, the car was, obviously too loose, and uh, so it's the last lap of the Indianapolis 500. And well, I don't. I, I'm not. Sh I wouldn't expect him to lift at that point, and it wasn't. It wasn't like he was. You know, he was sort of getting alongside. He, I guess his, I don't know the exact thing. I think his front wheels and my rear wheels were, were, were about alongside. So he put me in a position that I had to go wide. So, you know, as I said, the only mistake was when the car got loose. And uh, maybe that's experience, or maybe the car was just bloody oversteering. I don't know. Um, but that was, yeah, that was it. Excuse me, John. Hey, Dario, back here. <laughs> 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 Wait, I had a question for the dog. Dario, in your TV interview, you mentioned that all of your IndyCar wins have been achieved with Honda Power. Can you maybe talk about the effort that the Honda guys put in after your struggles in qualifying and everything, and just how much down to Honda the improvement in performance on car day and the race was? Absolutely. That's a good point. You know, I mean, you know, I, I, you know, I said I was on qualifying the jump. I mean, I was, I was, I was angry. It's, you know, you come here, and as I said, I had no expectations for the race, but I, I thought we'd be quick, and we weren't. And uh, I think I was fairly honest and clear about, um, you know, being upset with it, and 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 the Honda guys were were working hard and have worked hard. All uh, you know since since uh, the st before the start of the season, but they've been playing catch up, and uh, they just the turnaround from Sunday to Carp Day was 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 very impressive. And um, you can I mean, I just looked at those guys out there just now for my photograph taken. I thanked every one of them. You know, we've been in battle together a few times before, and uh, they continue to to amaze me. You know, when we're up against guys like Chevy and the Ilmore guys, who are smart people. What they did today, beating them, but the turnaround from last week—that is something very special, I think. Folks, we got four questions queued up. Two on each side. That's going to be it. And I got one starting right here. Thank you. First of all, congratulations and uh, thank you for uh, always being a uh, uh, human promotion. Thank you. And, uh, the ambassador for the sport. My question is: uh, Do you think uh, this kind of wins um, can support the plan? To expand uh, and expand the championship, the IndyCar championship to Europe again, <coughs> in, uh, uh, Rockingham, I mean, uh, or, or in Germany. 
So do you think any, any ch real chance in the near future? For this? Well, I think we have a good fan base in Europe and it's growing, but it's a tough one. Uh, if you look at a lot of the sponsors on the cars, in Target for instance, where Target are in business in Canada and, and, the, and soon, but mainly the US. And a lot of the other team sponsors are the same, so we have to be careful not to uh, not to, to put a lot of races where we can provide our sponsors with uh, you know, value. And so that's that's a difficult one. And I think also the you know the fan base in America as well. We've got to strengthen the fan base in, in the U.S. and and strengthen the TV package and all those things first, and then we can we can go from there. But um, you know, IndyCar is is a it has obviously a multinational driver lineup and teams and with you know the engine manufacturers the cars you know all that thing but it's IndyCar is is a, is a US based series and obviously we go to Canada and have a great time and you know China and Brazil this year but let's not forget our core I think as much as I would love to race in Europe. Dario we spoke earlier in the month about uh, predictions how we thought the month might go you sitting here where you are today, is this something you had an inkling might happen earlier in the lunch? No. No. But like I said earlier, Marshall, I don't have any expectations for the race. I just, I, Dixie and I, we get, we get on with it and we, we, we show up the, with the best car, you know, we, that we can. The, the, the engineering brains just, they work so bloody hard and, and, and we all try and work together to come up with the best cars and then we go racing. And see what the race will, will, will give us. <laughs> so I didn't know. I really didn't. Um, it's I, I, try, I tend to find it works better here for me to just keep a very open mind um, and not expect too much and just drive the car and, and whatever's in front of you deal with it. And, and look at the crew, the crew today, the way they dealt with that front wing problem and stuff. I just got on with it. It's pretty impressive. Thank you. Mario, one of the things you had to deal with today was the heat. How much of a factor was it? How did you deal with it? Well, I'll say it wasn't as much a factor, I think, as a, for the people, for the drivers, as it was for the people in pit lane and the people in the stands. I, mean, I was getting pretty hot in there, and I had 220 mile an hour air conditioning. So I was thinking, you know, how hot must it be sitting in the stands, or how hot is the pit crew? Um, so, you know, I've been hydrating all week. Um, Days like today, you know, we, we spend so much time working out. So um, it was it was a hot one. Was it the record? Did we break the record? No, not quite. Not one yeah. degree short. One degree short. So I didn't feel like it. <laughs> but uh, it was the the track got very slippery. <coughs> but we're lucky the the uh, you know, the Firestone tires were unbelievably consistent from the first lap of a stint right through to the to the end. Last question. Dario, the new chassis gave us a lot of drafting and passing today, put on a tremendous race. Last summer when the car was being developed, did Dan give you any feedback as to what they were working on or what they did in the car? Dan had to sign an agreement saying he wouldn't talk to anybody about anything to do with it. And we sweated him. And he was like, D Frank, I can't talk to you about it. And he'd give me that look. Dan had a certain look. He was always joking around, but he had a look when he wanted to get a point across. It was like a very steely look, and his youngest son Oliver can do it very well. I just freaks me out a little bit. But he looked right, and he thought, I, we can't talk about it. Dixie tried, you know, hey, do you want a beer? Come, we'll talk about this new car. Uh, just would not discuss it. Um, so he worked bloody hard on it, I know that. And um, he, uh, he, was the, he was the right man for the job. Thank you very much, and congratulations. All right, thank you guys.